this won't be everything you need to uh, be a good photographer. This isn't going to uh, teach you about composition or anything like that. There's still going to be a lot to learn, but this will be about 80% of what you need to know for photography. The rest will take a long time to learn. But And there will be things like how to use a light meter and a histogram on your camera, the difference between DSLR and mirrorless cameras, how to use your camera to shoot good video, uh, how to match the frame rate to the shutter speed, all those type of things. Those will be in future videos. Today's video is only going to be about the absolute basics of photography, which is the holy grail of photography and or not the holy grail but the holy trinity of photography and that is the ISO, the aperture and shutter speed. The first one I'm going to talk about is the ISO and the ISO is the sensitivity of your sensor or in the old days when you used to use film the ISO is the sensitivity of the film and you could buy different ISO films but you know once you put that in you were stuck with the whole with that until you shot the whole roll. With digital cameras you can change the ISO. Now with ISO a low ISO number such as 100 means that it has low sensitivity to light and a high ISO, ISO number such as 3200 means that it has a high sensitivity to light. And a lot of beginners think that they should keep their ISO as high as possible but that is actually the opposite of what you want to do. High ISO introduces noise in cameras or in, in your photographs. If you've ever seen a night, a uh, photo shot at night and there's a lot of particles or noise in the shot, that's because the ISO was high. And you can combat that by using a tripod so you can keep yeah, the shutter up and longer so you don't have to have such a high ISO, ISO. But basically, generally, you want to keep the camera's ISO as close to its native ISO as possible, and that's usually somewhere around 100, but it varies based on the camera. Aperture, which is the, in the back of the lens, there is like fan things that come out that change how big the hole is in the back of the camera in the back of the lens. And that is measured in f-stops. A low f-stop number such as f1.4 means that there's going to be a large hole. Which also means that there's going to be a low depth of a shallow depth of field or a low depth of field. A uh, high aperture number or high f-stop number such as f22 that means there's going to be a little bitty hole, but it means that there's going to be a large depth of field. And just as with ISO and aperture, uh, in order to get a camera that can shoot high ISO without showing noise, you have to pay a lot more. Well, lenses are that way too. With lenses, to the, the lenses with really wide apertures, such as f1.4 those are really expensive so you have to pay a lot more to get more light. Now aperture is used to control the depth of field as I said and you can use that for creative choices and you can see the difference where one of them in the background is a little blurred and the other one in the background is clear. Well that is that is uh, basically what aperture does is it controls the depth of field so a small number is shallow depth of field, large number is wide depth of field. So if you want to keep the mountains and stuff in the background in focus, you want a larger, you know, a bigger number. If you're taking a picture of a person and you want the background blurred, you're going to use a smaller number. The final thing is shutter speed. Shutter speed determines how long your sensor is exposed to the light. Shutter speed controls motion blur. If you use a fast shutter speed, you can freeze motion. If you're uh, 
taken photos of somebody playing sports or something like that, you're going to use a fast shutter speed. Or if you want to capture a bird in flight and you don't want it to be blurry, you can use a fast shutter speed. Sl a slower shutter speed, you can use that if, say, you've got your camera on a tripod and you're taking pictures of the mountains because the mountains aren't going to move. Or if they do, you've got bigger problems. But if you want to say you want to take a picture where everything else is, in, is uh, crisp and clear, but say a person running or a car moving is blurry, or those photos at night where you see everything is, in, is clear, but then you see just a string of lights where the cars are driven by, that is done by keeping the shutter open longer. And most cameras, you have the option of keeping the camera open up to 30 seconds. Anything longer than that, you're going to need a voltometer. With this information, when your photo isn't doesn't turn out, you'll at least know where to go to troubleshoot it. So, so the first thing you're going to set is your ISO, and then you're going to set your set your shutter speed, and then your or so you're going to set your aperture, and then your shutter speed. Now, if you take a photo, a test photo, to make sure that everything is what you thought. You can take the photo and you look at it and that photo is too dark. Then what you're going to need to do is adjust the shutter speed and take another photo. If it's if you've adjusted your shutter all you can and it's still too dark, then the next thing you want to do is adjust your aperture. And with your aperture you can you know you want to have a bigger hole for more light so you want to go for a smaller number and then if your photo is still too dark then you're going to increase your ISO. If your photo is too light or it's too washed out and bright the first thing you're going to do is adjust the ISO and you're going to turn that down and if you have your ISO as low as it's going to go and your photo is still too bright then you're going to adjust the shutter speed so you're going to increase the shutter speed so that the sensor is not exposed to light as long. If you've got the shutter speed up as high as you want to take it or as high as it will go and it's still too bright, then you're going to adjust your aperture. And um, with your aperture, of course, you're going to want to have a larger number or a shallower depth of field because then you'll have a smaller hole and so you won't have as much light. So these are the basics, and like I said, in future videos in this series, I'm going to talk about different aspects of difference between cameras, how to use the, uh, set up your camera and use it for video, things like that. But if you got any benefit from this video, I would appreciate it if you would click the like button it, so it'll help other people to find it. And if you enjoy content like this, Click the subscribe button so that you'll be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.